Hi everybody, uh, my name is Dr Kevin Jones. I'm a uh, geology teacher at Hills Road Sixth Form College. Um, during this session, we're going to introduce to you uh, what geology is all about. Now, I have a background in, um, I am a geologist. I was a, I was a university lecturer and then I was a working field geologist um, working for the uh, Geological Survey of Greenland, where I spent uh, six or seven years out in the wild uh, generating geological maps. So what I'm here to, today to do is to give you a chat about why would I want to do geology, uh, what will sort of skills can I gain from geology and what is the content of the course? Now, what is geology all about? Geology or the study of geology is really the study of the evolution of the Earth and how it actually works. So what we're going to look at in this course, uh, if you choose to take it, is to look at the evolution of the planet. Now, the planet has been around for 4.5 billion years and um, it evolved from a hot, mol hot molten ball after the formation of our solar system. So geology really starts by attempting to look back from the concept of the start of the Earth right the way through to the present processes that are occurring on the Earth's surface. And that's where we have a nice link with geography, which I'll talk about later. So first of all, we're going to look at the evolution of the planet and then how the planet actually works. Now, the thing is, you're mostly going to be look at the evidence that is recorded for all these events on the planet um, in the rock record and the fossil record and by looking at the major structures and features that occur around the earth. So it's really a study of how the earth has formed and evolved and it contains quite a lot of information from various aspects to put together what is a holistic story of how the earth actually formed. Now, the slide in front of you shows you really the uh, course outline. Um, there are three major components to the geology course. Now, component one here, the fundamentals of geology, are in fact um, the building blocks of the course. Now, this really covers what happens in the first year, where we are going to assume that you know very little about geology because it's a subject you never looked at before. And um, so we start from scratch. We start from the very smallest building blocks, which is elements, and then build up the story and understanding from that point. So in year one, the first option you would look at is the uh, elements which form minerals and then how the minerals form rocks. And that's a sort of basic understanding. We'll teach you how to um, identify the major features of minerals and how um, to identify minerals and name them. Um, and from that point onwards, the get to look at hand specimens um, and photographs of these kind of rocks and be able to identify them as we go through. Now, F2, as it's called here, then builds on that basic knowledge because we know we have rocks from different parts of the rock cycle. And I'm hoping you would have studied the rock cycle. Um, and we're going to look at igneous, metamorphic and sedimentary rocks and how they are all interlinked. So this module called surface and internal processes is um, a module that deals with the, the processes happening on the surface today and we're looking at modern day examples and we're going to assume that these modern day processes occur the same in the past. It's one of the basic principles of geology. So we can actually get samples from today and make analogies to past processes. So we're going to look at the um, igneous rocks such as intrusive features such as those that form Dartmoor and major mountain ranges. And we're going to look at the volcanoes in a big way as well, the volcanoes and the hazards they produce. And then what happens when these materials become eroded and transported by various methods, such as glaciers, rivers uh, and into the sea um, and form the world's sedimentary rocks. And of course, then we bury them and heat them and produce our metamorphic rocks. So those are the three major rock types we're going to look at and the processes that occur in between. Now, that really deals with the rock types. But of course, we can understand a lot more about the evolution of our planet by looking at the fossil record. So module three, F3 there, is time and change, where we look really at um, how animals and organisms become fossils and how we can use the information from fossil animals to interpret past environments and how these have changed over time, which we'll build on in the second year. So that is really F3. Now, F4, which is the final module, is looking at the Earth structures and global tectonics. And this is basically looking at something you may well have done a little bit about before. 
in, in your lower level lower level educations where you know we're looking at plate tectonics we're looking at continental drift but in probably far more detail than you've actually looked at it before so the first year course is really the fundamentals and a lot of it is based on the practical work that we do in the lab as well now in the second year we build on those skills that you've developed in the course and um, interpret the geological record now we look at the rock forming processes in more detail the formation of igneous sedimentary metamorphic rocks we look at them in a bit more detail and how we can simulate their formation say in a laboratory and uh, other features such as that we look at how we get folding and faulting and how rocks deform and change shape and size as we put them into plate collision settings and then we build on the time and change module by looking at past life including some of the precambrian uh, weird animals, soft bodied animals such as the Burgess shale um, and um, evidence for climate change and major catastrophic events like mass extinctions in the fossil record. Um, and that's quite a very interesting feature of the course. And then finally, we'll look at earth materials. We'll look at really what used to be called economic geology, such as oil and gas formation, coal formation um, and water resources and look at the origin and formation of metallic mineral deposits, of course, which are very important um, as a resource for humans. So we're going to look at those aspects in the first part of year two. And then we come on to look at what's called themes. Now, the major themes of year two are going to be geohazards, which includes earthquakes and volcanic hazards. And then also we're going to look at lots of map work. Now, map work is a skill that the geologist has to develop. And really the geological map is the um, language of the geologist. If you can read a geology map, you can understand geology. And um, we'll get some out and you get lots and lots of practice examples of looking at maps, but again, looking at problem solving as a way of approaching issues. Now we also do one of the three options you can see on the list there, which is T3, 4 or 5. We study T5, which is the geology of the lithosphere. And this really is about um, a sort of um, enhancement of uh, global tectonics. We're going to look at mid-ocean ridges, subduction zones and major mountain ranges and collision belts and understand what we can understand from today's examples and then interpret rocks from the past and what they can tell us about um, the formation of mountain ranges in the past and how it links to how the continents have changed um, during continental drift. So that really is the main course outline. Now, geology is full of what we call transferable skills. Um, you will gain lots of skills, um, and certainly in um, observational and recording skills. Um, any scientist needs to have a good skill in understanding and observing features and recording them in a detailed, systematic way. And we'll be training you how to do that. Um, and then how using some statistics, some maths, some basic um, evidence from uh, information you've gained from the samples themselves to in analyze the sample and come up with some conclusion about its origin and what it can tell us. OK, so um, again, these elements are used to problem solve. So the geologist is a real problem solver and that really develops your problem solving skills using various pieces of information. And as you can see, we can either do that in the laboratory and there's one of these uh, little problem maps on the left there. Or as you can see, students out there in the Lake District um, are two summers ago, now, two winters ago now, uh, collecting information on um, how rocks have changed as a result of being next to a major granite intrusion in the Lake District. Um, yeah, it was a fun day. Now, just to mention about trips. Um, it's a great opportunity to go to have and look at rocks in the field and we give you quite a few opportunities to do this because in my opinion geology should be done in the field um, the real geologist is someone who can interpret rocks and use rocks in, from field studies now on the first trip we go to a sort of a, a practice day uh, understanding how to record data and using field notebooks probably for the first time we have some nice waterproof ones for you um, and we go to Hunstanton now, you may have been to Hunstanton, but probably not looked at the rocks. OK, so we're going to go to Hunstanton for our practice or training day. Now we're going to apply those skills that we've learned at Hunstanton to our first year field trip, which is a field trip to 
um, the Lake District. Now we just showed a picture in the field of students in the Lake District. They um, were looking at the Skidor Granite Oriole. So we'll come on to the talk about the Lake District in a moment, just to show you an example of that. And also in the uh, second year, we get the example to look at a very famous stretch of coastline called the Jurassic Coast. Yeah, includes all those things like dinosaurs and all kinds of things down in Dorset. So we have a, a second residential trip because the Lake District is residential as well. Second residential trip um, to Dorset and that's four or five days down there studying the rocks and particularly we go down there to look at the famous fossils, fossil localities uh, in that area. And we also get you to produce your own geological map of Lulworth Cove, which is an exciting aspect of the work. So just uh, popping back to the um, Lake District. OK, um, the Lake District has a series of um, ancient rocks. And again, we go back to the Lake District to look at a lot of the more sort of processes which occur in forming deep crustal rocks, such as looking at granites, looking at their impacts on sediments, and then looking at poles and structures. But it's another example or another chance to get a um, skills and studying rocks in the field. Now, that's mostly all about the course. So um, what support do you get in geology uh, to help you? OK. Um, in the classroom, we have a very well structured course outline and curriculum, which we progress from relatively easy um, and simple at the start and get more complex as we go through. And we build up your understanding by revisiting things in the second year that you do in the first year. So there's some building on your basic first year understanding. We have full blown study packs for each element of the course and several packs in some cases because some of the units are quite long. Um, and they will be there as a resource for which you can use and they contain past questions and topics, etc. Um, there's a real focus on practical skills. Now, I didn't mention it under the uh, course outline before, but we'll mention it in a minute. Something called um, CPAC, which is simply um, assessment grades based on the practical work that you do. Now, it's a simple pass or fail in geology and you have 20 practicals to work on. I'll mention something about that in the next slide. So, as I've said, in the classroom, we use an investigative and problem solving approach to lessons. So in each lesson, you'll be given probably a map, probably some samples, um, possibly you need to look down the microscope, um, possibly do some simple um, tests on rocks to find out what they are um, and using hand lenses and other equipment to work out um, the origin of the rocks, possibly identify a few fossils and then try and put it all together to solve a geological problem or work out the geological history of an area using as many resources as we can to come up with the answer. So it's very much um, a hands on course um, and that's where the students really enjoy it because they get to look at lots of different stuff that they're not familiar with. Now, outside of class, like most places in Hills, we have a drop in support sessions, usually on a Friday for geologists, but that may change next year. Um, where you can drop in and have a chat with with myself or anyone else who's helping on the course. Um, if you have any problems or are struggling with a particular piece of work. Now, our lab is also open all the time. So if you're struggling and, and need to look at information and samples over a couple of days um, and you want to understand them all, then our lab is available until you all year round. Um, also schedule meetings one to one with students um, as well to help students with uh, problems and issues. And of course, assistance, as I said, in the practical classes and in the lab is uh, what we do. So. The assessment. Now, the assessment is an internal assessment or what's called a CPAC. It's endorsed practicals. Now, throughout the year, you get to do lots of practical work. Not everyone will be assessed. Um, we will look at 20 of them and we only need to assess 13 of them to make sure you've got five particular skills you've developed out throughout the year. And these are skills which are transferable skills. OK, so these are the CPAC endorsements. It's a pass or fail. Um, and in the main, most people pass that quite easily. OK. Um, on top of that, we have 12 uh, year 12 summer exams and we'll also have mock exams in year 13 as well as the main ones. 
So further opportunities also, if you are uh, very interested in geology, um, basically um, external speakers come in. We've got a couple from who've been through Hills Road as geology students and they come back and have a chat. One's been looking at um, volcanoes on Hawaii and doing a PhD in Oxford. So one's been doing planetary science degree up in Manchester. So you can see the linkage there. So um, the opportunities are there for uh, guest speakers in cohort with the geography department. We also have, as we as we mentioned, the field work. Um, and that field work is also taught by local experts, not simply just the geology teachers. Um, and we get, as we said, students coming back to help us chat with them. So student performance, here we have our uh, donuts for the student performance. 74% get A star to be above, and that's a very high uh, value added to um, that. So you really get to develop and improve your skills and your grades as we go through the course. And A to E, 100%. So we have a very good cohort and um, usually very high uh, performances in this topic. Because once students start geology, they seem to really like it. And finally, student destinations. Um, what do you do with geology when you finish? Well, geology, because it is a science, you can go down the pure science route. You can use, if you don't want to do maths, physics or chemistry, because you, you find them quite difficult and you want to do a science, that's a little bit easier. But again, it is a science. You can use geology as a third science to get your three sciences to go to university. And geology also mixes well, therefore, with biology because we look at paleontology and there are paleontology degrees if you want to go into just looking at fossils. We can mix it with then the physical geography and geography and geology links to environmental sciences. But there's also the weird and wacky wonderful things like um, volcanology and forensic science that geology can lead into. So geology has great links um, to many other subjects um, in particular geography. So hopefully that's been useful to you and I'm going to leave it there.